Hello, I'm Gwen Tillery, and I am the KPTV Event Coordinator and Partnership Coordinator. And I'm so excited to be able to come to you right now to introduce to you one of the wonderful ministries that we have here on KPTV. So sit back and get ready for this awesome word. I am sure that you are going to be encouraged as well as learn something from this message that you are about to hear. And when it's over, I'm going to be back to share with you how you can be a blessing to this ministry. Thank you. We want you to share this video with someone that you know needs a word, someone who may be down in the dumps, the enemy is playing with their mind, and they are in a place of hopelessness. I want you to pray and ask God who to send this video to because I believe God has a word with their name on it as he has a word for us on this morning. The second favor I want to ask, I want you to pray and ask your God how you can be a blessing to this ministry. What you see on the screen is how you can sow at the row because we believe God is going to do great things through this ministry. I want to take time just to thank our our uh, 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 dedicated uh, uh Partners, our Redeem team, those who are members of Redeemer's Road Ministries, we thank God for your tithe, we thank God for your offering, we thank God for your kindness. I believe this is a season that God is saying you, uh, uh, you can show how grateful you are by sowing into what you know is growing that God would get the glory from. Amen. Don't sow into anything. I'm not I'm not pressing and prompting you to, to do anything for this ministry. I believe God is going to do whatever he wants to do spectacularly, exceedingly, and abundantly through this ministry. But I'm offering you, by the grace of God, a chance to sow into this this ministry that God is going to get glory out of. You want to be a part of whatever God is getting the glory out of it. Hallelujah. But then let me just take my quick time to thank God for my lovely wife who is the apple of my eye and the author of my affection. She's my righteous river and my father's favor. There's no one in life that I would rather do life with other than my lovely wife, Kristen Thorne. I love you so much, baby. Then I thank God for my first support sister, who is my mother, who is still supporting uh, me even on today. Uh, Y'all with me. Thank God for her. And again, a shout out, a mighty shout out to uh, Redeemer's Road members, the Redeem team. Hallelujah. We thank God for all of you. I want to get right into my assignment this morning. I've already prayed. I believe God is speaking right in this hour. I don't want to miss what God is saying, so we're going to be obedient and go straight to our text. And that text is Exodus. Exodus chapter 14 is on your screen if you don't have your Bibles. Exodus chapter 14. Hallelujah. Can I just thank God? I thank God. I see someone who's being released right now in the spirit. I believe God is about to do some magnificent things in your life. He's just saying now is the season for you to be grateful. Amen. Don't, don't, don't miss what God is doing by not being grateful. Amen. God has a blessing, but it, it, it comes as a result of being obedient. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. Won't read that much uh, this, this morning. This is a familiar passage of Scripture. We all know about it. We all have heard about it. If not, you will today. Uh, but it's Exodus chapter 14. Just a few verses in your hearing. Verses 21 through 23. And the word of God says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord, listen, caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. Somebody say all night long. And made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. Listen, verse 22 says, So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground. 
and the waters were a wall, oh my God, to them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. That is the word of God for the people of God, to the glory of God. Verse 21 again, then Moses stretched out his hands over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. If you will pray, pray, pray for me as I preach to you from this text and from this thought, becoming by crossing. <laughs> It'll make sense in a minute. Becoming by crossing. God is saying in this season of your life, in order to become, it comes by crossing. Are y'all with me? In order to become something, we must cross over something. My brothers and sisters, let me start this sermon with a statement. That statement is God is, listen, oh Lord, thank you Holy Spirit, is not intimidated by what you've been. But he's interested in what you will become. Let me say that again. God is not intimidated by what you've been. Uh, but he's interested in what you will become. He's, he's not intimidated by what you've been in the past or who you've been in the past. Listen, how you have been paralyzed by pain, how you have been held hostage by your history, how you have been messy in your mind, delinquent in your decision, toxic in your thinking, hindered by your habits, or corrupted by your circle. Yes, repentance is necessary. Growth is a necessity. Change is needed. But God is not intimidated about what you've been because he's interested in what you will become. Stay with me this morning because the God I serve can make a criminal become a Christian. He can make a boy become a man, a hope monger become a worshiper, a, a thief become a tither, a freak, Lord, have mercy, become faithful. In fact, he can make the word become flesh, a, a snack become a supply, a teacher become student. He can make water become wine. He can make what's dead to become alive because God can make you become when you believe. Lord have mercy. That's how a sinner, listen, becomes saved. The Bible says he, the Father God, made him the Son of God who knew no sin to be sin for us, for you, listen, and me, that we might, here it is, become the righteousness of God in him. God made Jesus who knew no sin become our sins so that we could become the righteousness of God. God sent Jesus to die a death he didn't deserve so that we can have a life we don't deserve. He became something so that we could become something. We have to believe though in order to become. Somebody say, I got to believe so that I can become. <laughs> so in fact, in our text, listen, God made a sea become a sidewalk. Lord have mercy for his people to get to the other side. And what looked like a place of worry, God made a place of worship. What looked like a place of worry became a place of worship. God in his sovereign grace and mercy will make us become whatever he needs us to become so that he can get maximum glory out of our lives. But before you become, you must cross over what others crumbled under. Woo! Lord have mercy, you must cross over what others crumbled under. 
So our text today is found, help me Holy Spirit, in the book of the Exodus. The book of the exit. Somebody put it in the chat, say the book of the exit. And this is so important to the people of God because the book of the exit encourages us that we serve a God of the exit. Y'all stay with me, meaning there is no situation that our God cannot bring us out of. And what was a trap for somebody is only a trip for me. Are y'all going to help me this morning? I'm just traveling on this journey, and no matter how it looks right now, I know that my God will make a way out of no way. Because listen, he is the God of the exit. And this book of Exodus comes after the book of Genesis. Stay with me. And Genesis means the beginning. Genesis means the beginning. Genesis, listen, is the beginning of your becoming. Lord have mercy. In fact, somebody under the sound of my voice uh, is in the genesis of your becoming. Uh, there is a beginning to what God has you becoming. And so Genesis, the beginning, is, is first. But can I tell you in real talk that when you are beginning to become, Lord have mercy, what God would have you to be, you would have to exit from what you've been. Stay with me. I know you don't want to hear it this morning. Good God Almighty, let me pause right here quickly and say this. You want God to make you become something. That means you must exit out of something else. I want God to make me become something. I want God to make me become an answer instead of just having an answer. I want God to make me become a blessing and not just give me a blessing. I want God to make me become a godly man and not just say I'm a good man because you can be doing good but not doing God. Lord, have mercy. And in this season of your life, listen to me, my brother. Listen to me, my sister. In this season of your life, the Lord has sent me on assignment to show you the exit sign and know that it's good to give God praise for the entrances. But you better show enough praise him for the exit. And so we find ourselves in this book of the Exodus where Moses listened has become the deliverer's assistant. God, oh my God, Moses was not the deliverer himself, but he was the deliverer's assistant. He was God's man to help the people be delivered from the hand of the enemy. Stay with me. And let me say this, Moses had been a murderer, but he became a minister. Because God does not need to do a background check, uh, but he does a backbone check uh, to see are you able to handle the future he has for your life. Ooh. God does not press charges, but he presses changes. Y'all better come get me. He doesn't press charges against us, but he press changes for us. Uh, and he uses life situations, tests, and trials to press you into change. Lord, help me, Lord. For Moses had been a murderer, but he became a minister. Oh, my God, because you have to become so you can become the blessing that blesses others to become. Oh, my God, stay with me. Somebody say, don't mishandle your Moses. Don't mishandle your Moses. Don't mishandle your Moses moments. Don't mishandle that thing or that person that God is using to deliver you from the hands of the enemy. And so all in this book of the exit, uh, uh, up until this point, listen, God has prepared Moses from the pond to the palace to the plains. And I said on Thursday night that the plains are the places where God produces power in us for our purpose. Lord have mercy. And this is where Moses is. 
the Lord has allowed him to be a part of God's emancipation for his people. Listen to me. Salvation gives us emancipation from the evil one. And the fruit, listen, of salvation is the freedom to become what God would have us to be. Amen? And I'm speaking into your life on today that you have the right once you have the right once you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to become what God says you can be. And you must believe that for yourself. Uh, listen to me. You must believe that for yourself. Uh, I can get up here and I can tell you that you're the head and not the tail. But you must believe it for yourself. Uh, I can tell you that you're above and not beneath. Uh, but you must believe it for yourself. Uh, I can tell you that weeping, Lord, have mercy, may endure for a night. Uh, but joy comes in the morning. But... You must believe it for yourself. Uh, before you can become, listen, you must believe. Oh, my God. Somebody go ahead and text that, tweet that, tell that, that before you become, you must believe. Uh, belief is the beginning of your becoming. And sometimes, listen, when you have become used to the lies uh, of the enemy, it's hard to trust uh, the truth of God. <laughs> but in this season of your life, help me, Holy Ghost, uh, you better raise your head up uh, and lift your heads up uh, and say, devil, one of us is lying. Did you hear what I said? You better tell that devil one of us uh, is lying. This is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, and this is the day uh, I begin to become what I believe God says I can become. But, Lord have mercy, there is a crossing before becoming. And you become by crossing. Stay with me. You become by crossing. It's all in your Bible. This collection of slaves, this, this circle of people cannot become a nation until they cross the Red Sea. But the good news of the text, Lord have mercy, is that there is a green light at the Red Sea. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I said there is a green light at the Red Sea. I know at traffic signs and traffic lights, it means red means stop. But when it comes to God, red means go. There is a green light at your Red Sea. So we find ourselves between a pharaoh, which represents our past, and a sea, a place that we must travel through before our future. Stay with me. This, this Red Sea is a place of transition, and there is no transformation, hear me, without transition. Say it with me. There is no transformation without transition. Uh, transmission means the process for a period of changing from one state, listen, or condition to another. It's the place between where you've been and where you're trying to go to. It's the in-between place. It's between the Pharaoh, my past, and the promised land, my future. Stay with me. And sometimes in the between can be mean. Somebody say it with me. Between can be mean, but there is no transformation without transition. And transition, listen, usually consists of three major moves. Three major moves. It has a before, it has a between, and it has a become. Are y'all going to help me this morning? It has a before. You should have seen me before Christ got a hold of me. I was a mess. Then there is the between, the making of what I will be. So please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. I'm in the between. Then it's still become. It's the become. So we go from before 
to between to become. Yes, and your transition will have seasons and stages and states and stucks, Lord have mercy, steps and steeps. And it's in those times, listen, when we have to trust God. I know I'm preaching better than you saying amen. Can you trust God? With the punctuation marks to your life story. Lord have mercy. Meaning sometimes you want to go. But God puts a period there. And sometimes you want to stop. But God puts a comma there. And the most important principle of transition. Listen. Is trust. Woo. The most important principle. That you need when God is transitioning your life is trust. Do you trust God in your transition? Most of us do not. We post stuff about trusting God, but we do not. We tweet stuff about trusting God, but we do not. Because trust doesn't mean God has to co-sign everything you want to do. Lord have mercy. Most of us do not trust God. And the tragedy is most of us do not become what God would have us become. But I want to look at this text for the next 15 minutes and have a conversation about the crossing. <laughs> Y'all can go ahead and put that in the chat right there. Say, we need to have a conversation about the crossing. If you're going to become, it will be by crossing. Are y'all with me? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, the first thing that will, that will help you with your crossing is that you must listen, pivot on his past protection. Oh my God, good job, son. You must pivot on his past protection. Stay with me. You must pivot. Get your footing right from his past protection. Don't let that devil have you shaking in your boots. Son. God has been protecting you. You even, listen, even when you was being you. Even when you was being you, God was protecting you, not knowing you were becoming who he would have you to be. Somebody shout, he's protecting my becoming. He's protecting my becoming. God is so intentional, listen, about his glory that even outside your knowledge of him, he's been keeping you. In fact, that's somebody's testimony right there. I know it's mine that the Lord has been keeping me. He keeps me. He keeps me. He keeps me. He keeps on keeping me. He keeps me even when I don't want to be kept. Lord, have mercy. In fact, I owe him all of my praise because he has been keeping me. Even when I don't want to be kept, the Lord was keeping me. And my praise is that I want you to know that. Lord have mercy. God is keeping me. That's why y'all people who know that old song it says I want you to know that. God is keeping me. He, he has helped me and kept me from danger seen, listen, and unseen. <laughs> and when the crossing Begins to become, listen, complicated, Lord have mercy, and crippling. Somebody say the crossing will become complicated and crippling. And, and, and these are the times you must pivot on his past protection and keep it pushing. You must pivot and keep it pushing. Yes. It's in the Bible as, listen, it's on the screen. As soon as the children of Israel came out of bondage, Lord, the Lord kept them. Lord, have mercy. Y'all better stay with me. The Bible says the Lord kept them, listen, from battle. Stay with me. As soon as they came out of bondage, slaves 
He kept them from battle because they were not soldiers yet. There is a difference between a slave and a soldier, and it's in the transition that God completes the transformation. We were, we have been a slave to sin. Stay with me. But God is making us become a soldier for the Savior. But the Lord did not send them the way, the Bible says, that they would would have been a battle. Listen, that God kept them from the battle. Listen, because the word tells us that God understood that if I allow them into battle before they are battle ready, Lord have mercy, they will go back to bondage. And a lot of us, listen, start fighting people and stop focusing on God. Y'all better come get me this morning. I say that a lot of us who are not even battle ready start fighting with people but stop focusing on God. But God protects us from even ourselves. There are some battles that God kept you from because you would have lost and then you would have lost your way. God is saying, in this season of your life, I can't let the battle beat the becoming out of you. Lord, have mercy. I can't let the battle beat the becoming out of you. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. But also listen to the Bible. It says, verse 20 is on your screen. So they took their journey from Succoth and it came to the end of the edge of the wilderness. Listen, the Bible is so awesome. It says they, they, they took their journey from Succoth and at the edge of the wilderness. At, at the edge of the wilderness. At, I'm trying to get it in your spirit. At the edge of the wilderness. Have you been at the edge? Have you ever been at the edge? I, I believe... I have, and, and I know I have, and I believe some of you have been singing. In fact, don't push me, Lord have mercy, because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying. As promised, I'm back. Thank you for tuning in. As promised, as I said, I would return and I would tell you exactly how you could be a blessing to this ministry. And so if you go to KPTV, Kingdom Purpose TV, and locate the flyer section and locate the flyer that specifically shows this ministry, you will be able to click the donate button and be able to be a blessing to this specific ministry. For those of you who might be listening on Roku or other channels, you can do the same thing. You can simply log on to KPTV on the website. You can download the app and find that specific ministry and donate. We thank you for being a listener. We thank you for tuning in. And we thank you for being a blessing to the ministries on KPTV.